Adam Lerner, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the new stuff that's in Lightroom 4. Um, I've been using Lightroom 4, I actually started using the beta version of Lightroom 4, and I bought the upgrade, and I've been using it, and it's been a little bit buggy for me, um, a little bit slow. I have a huge catalog, and I'm wondering if maybe updating the current catalog I had maybe had to do with it. I went all over Lightroom forums, they said that perhaps that it has to do with using a second monitor. Um, there's a lot of different things, a lot of different theories out there, a lot of different stuff that people are trying to you know, discuss as to what the performance issues were. Uh, Adobe Labs released uh, Lightroom 4.1 as a beta release. I installed it. Seems to be doing better. Yay. Um, tethering for D800-D4 uh, in Lightroom still, I don't think so. But anyway, let's get back to uh, the, the, the discussion at hand for today. So today, we've got this image here that I shot of Derek Poundstone. Derek Poundstone is America's Strongest Man. He's a world class strong man. Um, he's a, a professional athlete and he also happens to be a police officer with the Nagatuck Connecticut Police Force. Um, so he's, he's a really interesting guy. He's kind of down to earth. He's kind of a regular guy, um, but he's also, you know, this kind of exceptional athlete. So he's got this amazing story. So fortunately, I uh, spent a few days um, up in Connecticut uh, doing some photos with him and uh, this was one shot that we did uh, off-site. Uh, a couple of uh, other uh, patrolmen came by. Um, I guess this guy is uh, maybe a sergeant. Um, forgive me if, if I got that wrong. Um, anyway, these guys came by, and uh, we just, in like two seconds, we threw this shot together, and uh, I think it's really cool. So a couple things I want to talk to you about when getting into it. Number one, Right off the bat, we this is the edited image. So if we go to the before, before, you know, same kind of thing, you know, typical digital SLR image, a little bit soft, um, needs to be sharpened and yada yada. So I sharpened it up, you know, gave it a little bit more, a little bit more life, um, you know, various different ways. Uh, anyway, um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is using Lightroom 4 and some of the great hidden nuggets, or maybe even they're not hidden. Maybe they're new nuggets that you guys have never even used before. Okay, number one, you see how there's a little exclamation point here. Well, that means that this image, um, if you hover over it, it says update to current process 2012, because this image, because it was created in Lightroom 3, is still using the 2010 process okay so very first thing I want to do is I want to update only this image so I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to click it boom now let me just undo that because I want you guys to pay close attention right in here into the basic develop module so look we have exposure recovery fill light blacks okay just look look right in this area right here I'm going to hold down the option key I'm going to click it boom look what happened now we've got highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. So uh, this whole area has changed. And you can honestly see that the image has, has also changed because some of those previous processes don't necessarily translate. So what I could do here is I could just go in here and I could just tweak it for the process, which I might ultimately do. But what I'm going to do right now, actually, is I'm going to reset the image. Okay, so we've updated it to the current process. However, I've reset the image. And what I'd like to do here is I'd like to talk to you guys about all of these fantastic new presets that are bundled with Lightroom 4. Now we've talked about presets. A preset's a very, very easy thing to make. All you've got to do is retain the develop settings that you've created and just hit shift, I'm sorry, hit uh, command N and uh, you'll be prompted to a window that will, here, you know what? Let me just show you guys really quickly. I'm going to undo. Um, undo the settings right here. If I hit Command N, that gives me a snapshot. Sorry. Um, and you know what? Let me create a snapshot. I'll just create a snapshot, and that'll be a snapshot of that that previously developed image. If I do Command Shift and N, that brings me up to preset. I, it already is going into my current folder, and I can call this anything I want. I could just call this the Poundstone preset. And look at all the different settings that you've gotten here. And depending on how you want to utilize this preset going forward, you can basically check or uncheck any of these things, okay? And then if you apply that preset to any images going forward, the same settings will be applied. It doesn't mean the image is going to look the same. 
It just means the, the settings that you applied to this image, you could apply to other images. This can be very handy when you've got a set of images that are all taken within the same place and whatever, because not everybody wants to synchronize all of their images across the way. Anyway, let us forget about this for now, and let me go back to what I was gonna suggest earlier, and I wanna to talk to you guys about all these fantastic new presets that come in Lightroom 4. So I'm, again, I'm gonna reset this image. Okay, so this is right out of the camera. Now, actually, I'll, I'll get rid of the info right here just to clean it up. Now look, okay, all of these black and white filter presets, you've got the blue filter, blue high contrast filter, green filter. Now I'm just scrolling over these because I'm using the navigation window to show me a preview of what the image could look like, look like if I applied these presets. Now, a lot of these colored filters are what folks used to use in film. We used to put colored filters over um, our lenses when we shot images because it would block out certain colors from the spectrum and it would change the overall look of the image. I mean, look at how amazing it is. Like you add this orange filter, look at that. I mean, it just gives it this incredibly kind of contrasty vibe. Uh, let's say you wanted to do a red filter, high contrast. I mean, look at that. I mean, obviously, the other thing that I wanted to stress to you guys is that just because you apply a preset doesn't mean you can't then go in and tweak it. So let's keep going down the line here. So these are these are black and white filter presets. Now there's just black and white presets over here. Actually, we didn't even go into infrared, which is kind of kooky. I mean, look at that. I mean, that just has such a crazy look about it. So then we've got different kind of high contrast, different black and white looks um, that you can check out in here. Um, you know, something like real kind of a silvery vibe with some grain added to it that kind of gives it a little bit of that film vibe. And then they've got these Lightroom black and white toned presets. So you've got these kind of antique looking ones, you know, that are kind of yellowed like an antique photograph. That's real nice with the kind of light that we have. Um, the cream tone, um, you know, I guess these maybe also refer to older kind of processes um, and uh, process techniques that were used back in film. I guess that's how they got their name. Selenium tone, I love this. I always like that kind of like real kind of steely kind of uh, uh, black and white. Then of course sepia. Then you've got some split toning going on over here. Um, Okay, let's keep going down here. Now the color presets I think are really, really super cool. Check out the age photo, all right? That's pretty cool. Look at bleach bypass. I love this, this kind of desaturated, like it's it's still color, but it's like so subtle right there. Um, the cold tone looks really cool. You know, that kind of gives it like that, another filmy kind of vibe. Cross process is kind of crazy. Um, let's just pick one of these. I love that. I mean, look at how cool that is. You still get a little bit of the skin tone in there and some of the, the other colors that are coming through over there, but you've got this blue cast over the entire image. So really kind of a cool thing. Um, direct positive, old polar, yesteryear. Let's see what the old polar is. I wonder if that refers, now nah, I have no idea. Yesteryear. Again, a really nice kind of vibe. You know, you still retain a lot of the the, the kind of detail in there. Um, and you know, look, I will say this: it also helps when you're doing kind of this kind of processing, is to start with an image that already has good bones. And what that what I mean by that is, you don't want to try to rescue an image and put all this kind of crap on it, thinking that if I apply all these filters to it, it'll like bring the image back to life. Yeah, okay. There's always exceptions. I'm gonna I'll say never say never. But if you can start with good source material, it helps because you're gonna just enhance it that way. All right, so we've got heavy grain. Um, that's kind of weird. I, you know, I'm not really a fan of adding grain to a digital image. I think that's just kind of wacky. Different kinds of grain, rounded corners. Um, I guess it gives a kind of a photo frame light look. Um, rounded corners white. That's kind of cool. And then just different levels of vignetting, you know, so you can really get in there. That already looks really cool. So, you know, the other thing too is that you can add a couple of different ones. You could go bleach by bypass and then you could add vignette too. And look at that. Now you're stacking those um, those different uh, settings, you know, so you're not necessarily limited to using just one. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go back to my original source. Then there's just some general presets, auto tone, medium contrast curve, punch. See what that looks like. Yeah, just gives us some more punch. Sharpen faces, that's weird. I don't really see a big difference there. Sharpen scenic. 
again, it's so subtle, zeroed. I guess that maybe kind of makes it a little bit flat. Um, then there's video presets, and I guess these are for applying to video clips. I think it's probably the same kind of thing. So let's just say that we wanted to kind of use a stack of these uh, um, of these presets right here, okay? So let's just go back in here, and we'll go to Punch, okay? Then we'll add Bleach Bypass, and then we'll add the vignette um, number two. Look at that, you know, that's super cool. I mean, it's not necessarily what I would have intended um, for this image, but what I wanted to tell you guys is that, you know, this can always be a good starting point. Now you can look at this and say, okay, you know what? I've applied all those settings. I like where this is starting right here, okay? So you could say to yourself, you know what? I'm just gonna drop the exposure just a hair, okay? And I'm just gonna add a little bit of contrast and I wanna add some shadow detail in there. Um, it's a little bit too desaturated, so I'm just going to grab a little bit more saturation, bring that up to about there, let's say. Vibrance, bring that up a little bit. want to add a little bit more clarity to it, okay? Um, you know, you can obviously, I like to add sharpening whenever I can, so just add a little sharpening to it. That's probably too much. Bring that down. I'm just going to do this rather quickly. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. Um, you know, obviously there's no split toning going on, so a lot of the effect um, that was achieved here was through desaturating different colors over here. So you might say to yourself, you know, the yellows and oranges are too desaturated, so I'm just going to bring those up because the skin tones, I want to just have more skin tone in there. You know, so you just bring those up to somewhere around there. Um, I mean, look, you guys, you can play with this as much as you want, okay? There's no shortage of options that you have when you're playing with an image, and I don't mean playing with it, I mean when you're coming up with a certain aesthetic, a certain vibe that you want to apply. Um, you know, let's look at the vignetting over here, you know, well maybe I want to just even bring that in a little bit further, you know, I mean you're not locked in, okay, and then let's say I want to just, f you know, feather that in like somewhere right there, boom. All right, now you could say to yourself, you know what, I love this, okay, I took all of these these presets over here, okay, the ones that I wanted to apply to this, and then I tweaked them to my own liking, and I ended up with this, okay? So then you can do Command Shift N, and call this a new preset, and you could call this kind of, um, I don't know, bleached Poundstone. You can call it whatever you want. I mean, that's just, I, I would just name it that so that I could remember it, and maybe just LR4, um, because a lot of these, um, you know, now only apply to Lightroom 4 images. Boom, I created it. And then there it is in my, um, in my presets. These are ones that I've made in the past. This is in my folder, ALP Adam Learner Photography. I've now kind of co-opted some of the presets from Lightroom 4. I've kind of blended them together. I've done my own take on it. And then I've created a preset for my own. And, you know, look, just going forward, it doesn't necessarily mean then I'm gonna be locked into that either. I can always use this preset as a starting point. So I just wanted to let you guys know that sometimes even just using these presets as a starting point, when, you, when you're kind of thinking you wanna do something creatively, you wanna break out of the mold, maybe you're just thinking you, know, you wanna go for a particular kind of look, you can, you can apply different presets, but don't just apply them willy-nilly apply the preset and then go over into the develop module here and look at what different sliders it affected. Look at how it affects the basic module. Look at how it affects the color module. Look at all these different things. Look at the tone curve so that when you're going forward, you know that if you do certain things, you're going to be able to drive those looks on your own without having to always go for a preset. So, Long story short, or end of conversation, or ending, putting some finality on it, let's say, these presets can certainly save you time. And I generate presets often to help save me time and to help to develop a signature look for some of my photographs. So don't be afraid to try stuff out because look, at the end of the day, I can just create this. I'm gonna, I'm, oh, I'm just gonna create a new, um, a new snapshot, okay? And if I wanna just reset this whole thing, I can go boom, I can reset it and I'm back to zero. However, 
I can always go back to my snapshot. This was the original image, the original file. Um, and you can see, you know, this is just kind of a standard kind of um, develop, you know, standard kind of image, whereas the uh, this one has like much more of a thing going on for it. But again, it's really up to you. It's, it's your, your own taste. So that's it for now. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about some of the, the cool stuff that now comes bundled. I, I think that there were some presets that were bundled with, with Lightroom 3, but nothing um, nearly to this extent. So this is really, really super cool. So, so don't forget about this kind of stuff. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and we'll see you soon.